Hello everybody, Sonda Delaja here. Welcome to Kiev, Ukraine. Sorry for a little bit of lateness that we're experiencing. Here we go. Oh, I thought they said two minutes after, so no, no problem. Hello, Steven. Welcome, everybody, for Lasha Day. Welcome, Innocent. Welcome, Eric. Nice to see you. Danny Natsenga, thank you for your gift. Only I can't see it. You know, I, I gave it to Mayowa or somebody here to be using. They have not given it back to me. So I, I didn't use it yesterday. I hope they will bring it today. You know, so that I will be using it as a pointer. At least they are supposed to give me one of the pointers. Even if not your own, at least the one we had here before. So thank you so much, Daniela Senga. Your girlfriend here, Shinwe, or our girlfriend, <laughs> our old friend. <laughs> she is uh, representing all of you here in Kiev, Ukraine. Daniela Senga, you've got to come back somehow to Ukraine. <laughs> to a new Ukraine, a revived Ukraine. Okay, so the topic that we are going to be examining today is very essential. I would like you people to go and invite your friends and your family, people, because the topic of today is going to be, wow, unbelievable. We are going to be talking about syncretism in relations to prayers. Syncretism in relations to prayers. Put that up, please, because it's not only when I go there. Syncretism in relations to prayers. So, you know, the topic of, of course, the topic is, the general topic is cleansing the African church of syncretism. And today's topic is syncretism in relations to prayers. Syncretism in relation to prayers. So, you know, and you know, there is a lot of praying going on in Africa. But only that a lot of people don't know that what we call prayers is actually syncretism. So that is a very, very serious question that we have to examine today because many people don't even know how is syncretism possible in prayers? How can syncretism be in prayers? Well, we're going to show you some of the videos today. You will see that a lot of our prayers is paganistic, full of syncretism. So that's what we are going to be looking at that even our prayers is uh is full of is polluted because of religion syncretism in prayer so that's very sad but let's see some vi some videos and i think you too will be convinced very soon that a lot of what we call prayers is synchronistic is uh, paganistic okay here we go yes. Before you sit down, I'd like you to profess the life of three persons. So, my friend, the mouth that mocked you will turn around to congratulate you. In the name of Jesus. Stop, stop. Okay, I'm sure you are able to hear what just what the man of God just said, the, you know, the mouth that did something that mocked you will turn around to congratulate you. Not bad, you know, that's like a prayer request or whatever, a wish. But uh, that's not the kind of prayers that we're supposed to pray. The, you know, our prayers, is not, it's not supposed to be concentrating on who. You know, even if you are going to be talking about who, we talk about God. But our, you know, what, what he is giving here is vengeance. And the Bible says vengeance is the Lord's. Don't be asking, don't use prayer as a place of, uh, in Russian language, uh, they call it svadit shot. It's like uh, you don't use prayers to be a place of settling issues. So when you begin to say the mouth that caused you, 
will now be the mouth that will come back to bless you. You know, you are using prayer in the presence of God to bring matters mundane matters to be saying okay he is the one who i like it like some little children in the playground okay this this guy he is the this, mama 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 papa 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 this is the boy this is the boy that offended me so there was like okay why did you offend my son you know that's the kind of uh attitude that we're having in prayers that's the kind of upbringing that we have been given the mouth that uh cost you will now be the same mouth that we congratulate you. All those things are paganistic, and uh, we are not supposed to be, you know, settling matters, or what, what did I call it? Settling, yeah, settling issues in in, in prayers, I mean, with people, settling, uh, not, is it settling matters, we should say, what's the right word? Uh, you know, not settling, it's uh, using prayers as a place of, uh, uh, you know, I, you know, as a retaliation and uh, repaying back, paying back evil for evil. This is so we are for the matter. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Professor, I get to know for three other persons. Different from those first three. See, my friend, the power of God will move you into uncommon favor. In the name of Jesus, Jesus. the three persons. You know, what is all that? Prophesy this, prophesy that, or that. You know, people are just like, they don't, it's like people just don't have more to do in life. You see, they, you know, what we call prayers in Africa is like, people don't have what to do in life, and they just have to wind away that time, hoping for some miracles out of nowhere. I mean, this, they are supposed to, a lot of things that we are praying about in Africa is a, is a waste of time. I just want to, what about the ones I told you about the camp that I said I sent to you? Do you have that? I hope okay, you bring that one because I don't understand these ones you are showing me. So, you know, a lot of the things people are praying for in Africa is actually, they are actually things that, uh, you know, that uh, God has already done or that is asking us to do. Just find the right time, the right minutes so that where people are praying really. I saw that in the beginning. I think that is it, isn't it? Yeah, let's see this one. Let's see how people are praying here. The people are just praying by themselves, right? Okay, let's see prayer here. Almighty God, let it go tonight. Let it go tonight. Let it go tonight. Let it go tonight. No more sorrow, no more anxiety. Everything causing me sorrow, everything causing me anxiety. Lord God Almighty, let it go tonight. Let it go tonight. Let it go tonight. You see, the, the question here, that, that prayer request says, everything causing me sorrow, let it go tonight. Not bad. But you see, prayer is supposed to be, first of all, a place of meeting with, with Father God. Of meeting with Father God. Prayer must be something that, a place where we come to, to first of all, recognize God. You see, let, let, me, let it go tonight. I, we, we can show that a bit later when we're, we're under the point. But I'm talking, I want to see general prayers right now. You know, because this prayer, let it go tonight, and it's focusing people in, uh, on their needs. So the needs of the people is becoming the focus in prayer instead of God to become the focus in prayers. God is supposed to be the focus of prayer. Whenever humans and his needs 
become the focus in prayer, that is paganism. The focus in prayer must be God, not humans. So whenever you make yourself the focus in prayer, you know, that is egocentric. And whenever you make, you know, your problems the focus in prayer, that is paganistic because Jesus said, you know, when you come to pray, don't worry about what to eat, what to drink, what to, once you begin to make those things, what to eat, what to drink, your focus, that is paganism right there. But what is supposed to be the focus is supposed to be Father. I think this is it right here, you know? It's supposed to be God, you and God. You are supposed to just be loving on God and, uh, you know, have a personal relationship with him. And then, you know, issues might come up. You might have needs later on. You can mention your needs. But the focus, the focus must not be you, you know, just you and your problems. Don't make problems. You're focusing prayers. That's what Jesus was trying to tell the people when he said, you know, don't let, you know, your needs, what to eat, what to drink. Don't let those things go. But when pastors be, come to church, when you come to church and pastors are the ones you're saying your problem tonight, your problem tonight, that is what has made the African church paganistic. That is what has made the Nigerian church paganistic. So everybody is now going to the church to meet their needs, to make their needs met and to make pray, pastors to pray for their needs. So that is a major problem right there. Let's see this video. Overcome by the spirit of the music, some light flat on the floor. Once every month, thousands of worshippers flock to the Tadi Royal Church seeking the miracles he promises. They come from all corners of Nigeria as well as from outside the country. Many of them are here to seek a release from the harsh economic realities. If these people were not getting their very food, yeah, can you right make now, a little bit from... backward where this man was praying? Just a little bit, yeah, just a little bit, yes. No, no, they are here to seek a release from the harsh economic reality. They come from all corners of Nigeria as well as from outside the country. Many of them are here to seek a release from the harsh stop, stop. economic you see, you see what is happening? You, you think that people who are praying like that, you know, and that is African. Let it keep on playing, you just no sound. You see, when people are praying like that and, you know, struggling and really praying, we think that uh, people really love God or people are really, you know, praying for something serious. But really, it is the problem that is, that, is, uh, that is killing them. It is people are just praying out of their sorrow, out of their... It's not, you know... Okay, I, I'm going to be able to show you that one. We have to show it again sometime later. And I'm going to tell you what is wrong with that kind of prayer. You know, is it bad for, for people to be praying strong and emotionally hard? No, it's not bad. It's not, it's not wrong as well, but... At the end of the day, you will see that the focus is not God. The problem is that the focus is not God. Even when people are giving like this. So can you show, show it again? Give the sound. Path to wealth in Nigeria. Preachers and they, of people are dancing. They are dancing. Are dancing. Well, the now. They are dancing to go and give offering. You see what is happening in Africa? People are dancing to go and give offering. You know, even this act of worship going to dance and you know give put money there some you know if you if you don't know what is going on you might think oh these people love god so much but you see those people who are going to give that money there they are not thinking about loving god though they are thinking about going to give that money so resolve their problems they are thinking of you know uh, uh you know if i give the money god will give me back or give me more money back it will it will bless me or it will do some things to me you know it's all about egocentric what was this? Can you give the sound? Mohammed Al Jazeera, Lagos, eh? Nigeria. Okay, you know that, that is uh, a lot of that is a very funny thing that you know we have to dissect it when it comes to prayer in Africa. Eh? We've got to really okay, yeah. Let's show this one with people praying like this. You know, when people are praying like this, you think people must. This is church, and this is how church must be. Okay, let's see. Let's let me show you. Okay, go go back again. I wanted to just pray as well when people are just praying strong like that. Can you go? Yeah. You see what people are doing? You see people are really praying. No, go back a little bit. Okay. It will go. Okay. You see what is happening? 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 So what, do you think anybody doing this has time to look at God or to think about God? It's not about God when you are praying this way. You are not thinking about God at all. I mean, you have forgotten about God. 
The only thing you are thinking about right there is your problem. It is how to get the problem out of the road, how to make the a solution come. It is you are focusing on problems. You are pro, pro, focusing on problem or on solution. You see? You see, so they don't teach you in Nigeria when you are praying. You see what people are doing? You, you can tell that the way they are praying like that, it is not God they are thinking about. They are thinking about, oh, this is my problem, or enemy. It is either enemy, you see what's happening? People are really fighting. You see? You see what's happening? So people are thinking that prayers is a, it has to do with their exercises or their, their energy. or their, So it is either they are fighting the enemy strongly, you know, or they are, you know, or they are, you know, focusing on the problem and calling solution to the problem. You see, that is what it's all about. So um, that this is very good. This so because we have not been taught how to pray in how to pray according to the Bible in the in, in, you know in, in our country. You see what's happening? You see what's happening? You think these people are talking about their father? You think they are concentrating on their father? You see what's happening? You see what's happening? You think this God they are concentrating on like that? No, you cannot be fo focusing on God and be doing all that. All these gy gymnastics you are seeing, that you see, it is need. You see photographs they are carrying. You see, it is the need. It is the economic need that is dictating the prayers. It is the need. It is the miracle they are betting. They are they are promising them or the 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 uh you know or whatever. That is what is causing them to do what they are doing. So it is not about God at all. Now I'm see I see some people are coming to accuse me here and to attack me, but the, you know it's a pity that they will not hear me to the end. It's a pity that they will not hear because by the time I go to my notes now, you begin to see what we are talking about. You see what's happening? You know this is not you. Is there is no way you do this when you are focusing on God? You see what's happening? You see what's happening? You see what's happening? There is just no need you focus on God and be praying like this. This is a sign that people are either fighting Satan, focusing on Satan, or focusing on problems. That is exactly what we are saying that we, our people are not taught. They are just killing themselves with, and they will not get results. I can guarantee you that they don't have results. They are just killing themselves, wasting their energy for nothing. It's a pity. It's a pity. Put on the volume. Let's hear. And meanwhile, you'll be putting this. Singers of the wicked. Jesus 
Jesus, then we pray. Lord of God, Jesus, Lada, Dura. You say, you see why people pray like that? You know, I have not had the words, what, what he was saying, when I already knew that it's either about enemies or it's about problems. You know, when people become like, when it's, can you begin to show it a little bit, just without the voice? When it becomes combative like that, you know, you cannot be related to your father, sir, pastor. You are going to be father today, heavenly father. You don't mind? I don't mind. Okay. You know, please show it. They show you that. For concentrate on that. There is no way you will be, you know, you say all those things. Well, there is no way you will be concentrating on your heavenly father. Can you imagine me now? This is my heavenly father here, let's say, as an example. And I'll be saying, <laughs> there is no way I'll be, you know, <laughs> you know, there is no way you'll be talking with God and be doing all that. When it's a fatherly, when it's a fatherly relationship, that's why I say prepare before you come. My wife, then you have to hand over this thing to somebody because you are not, you don't think ahead. Because when it comes to a personal relationship with God, you don't become combative. You don't begin to do all that. <laughs> When it's past that relationship with God, what you do is thank you, Father. Father, I have this issue. I have this problem. Even if you have problem, but your focus will not be about problem. It will be about I love you, Father. I love you, God. I love you. Thank you for what you do for me. Thank you for watching over me. Thank you for loving me. This heavenly Father, this is what prayer is supposed to be about, first of all. Prayer is first of all supposed to be about your relationship with your heavenly father. It's a father no son relationship. If you have not listened to my series on prayers, I have a whole series on prayers. Go find it on YouTube, on SoundCloud, on Telegram. But prayer is first of all personal relationship. Is there any time where you have to do spiritual warfare? Yes, but our warfare is of faith. Is there any need? Sometimes we can become emotional. Yes, we can all become fervent in prayers and emotional in prayer sometimes. But it is not supposed to be the, 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 the only format or the main format of prayers. Routine. When, eh? routine. It's not supposed to be the, the rule, the routine, the order of the day. It's, it's an exceptional time. Either during intercession or, you know, during, you know, when... Uh, you know, God, Holy Spirit just leads you, you know, and, you know, but it's not the norm. When it comes to prayer, first of all, you must always see, he said, our Father. Prayers must always start with imagining and seeing the Father before you. But the way things are going on in Africa these days, and the kind of prayer people lead, they lead you to pray, is to see an enemy before you, and you are killing them, you are seeing demons and you know, spirits, and you are, you are battling spirits and demons. That is a problem. That is a problem. But that is not the order. That's not the norm. Let's see some pictures how all these things are, being, are done. Go back. So let's see. If you see so... so some of these things that we are seeing, some of the things that we are seeing is just focusing, you know, see what people are doing. It's just trying to focus on the enemy, trying to combat the enemy, fight the enemy. You know, we, the enemy shouldn't be your focus at all. Even if you have enemy and you want to talk to your father about it, you will see that with the daddy. This is the situation now. Look at this. You will bring the case and talk to your father about it. But the way they, our people are praying is that they themselves are the ones who want to use their power, energy, and the intensity of their... You see? You see what's happening? Make it go back a little bit. As if it is them who must use their power and the intensity of their power to kill the enemy or to win the war. You see? It is like it is the emotion that wins the war. It is like it's the emotion that kills the enemy. It is faith. 
It is all our work is a work of faith, not a work of, you see, you see what's happening? They are making our people to lose their mind. And these people will be living in depression. This, all these people are patients of clinical depression. You see, because after doing all these things, go back. After doing all that, okay, it's done now. After doing all these emotional gyrations, they will see that they, they have no or little results. Either very low or no results at all. And that would, you see, you see what's happening? This will lead them to, you see, you see, all these things will lead them to depression. This is, you know, this is digging the grave for their own depression. They are digging the grave for themselves. Because this will lead to depression because they will be, and it will lead to disillusionment. This is setting these people up for frustration in life. It is setting them up for, for, you know, for anger, bitterness, disillusionment. You see? How can you make people to think that their, the efficacy of their prayer depends on this? And this is all connected with CAC and things like that. But we should let people know that it is not our emotions, our gyrations, our, you know, that makes the, the prayer powerful. What makes the power, prayer powerful? The Bible says that if you will ask for something, tell this mountain to leap and cast into the sea and doubt not in your heart. It is the faith of your heart. If you doubt not in your heart. It is that faith, the ability to believe and not to doubt in your heart that brings you answer to prayers. And this is not just about mountain of fire. This is everywhere. You know, all of us can be emotional, yes? But you know what I mean? This is not supposed to be the norm. This is not supposed to be the order of things. But in Nigeria now, if you have not prayed like this, you have not prayed at all. And what I heard is that if you really want prayer to be hot, you have to begin to speak about all those demons and spirits and all those evil spirits and things like that. And everybody become like this. And, but again, they ask Jesus, how should we pray? He said, if you want to pray, go to your heavenly father. Focus must be heavenly father. I don't know if any one of you have listened to my series on prayers. Please, if you have not, please go and listen to it. Please, I mean, somebody provide the link. Let's bring the, give the link there so that people could know the link and go there. Okay, let's go back to my, let's go to the notes. I mean, to the topic and then to the notes. What was the topic of today? Thank you, sir. Okay, this one will not go through here, is it? What about the red one? It's not here, okay. We will bring it later. Anyway, cleansing the, the African church of syncretism. And the topic of today is syncretism in relations to prayers. Syncretism in relations to prayers. Let's see one, one, one point. This also helps us understand that prayer in the Nigerian church has progressively become less of a communication, of a communion. You see, prayer is support. These things we have seen is making us to see that prayer is no more a matter of communion with God. In the Nigerian church, prayer is no more communion. Answer again, I need you. What is prayer supposed to be? Prayer, first of all, is not Satan. Prayer, first of all, is not enemy. And prayer, first of all, is not problems. Prayer, first of all, is communion. Communion with a heavenly father, with a loving father, heavenly relationship, Loving relationship with my loving father. Prayer must first of all be communion. Communion with your heavenly father. Personal relationship with God. Personal, intimate relationship with God. That is prayer. And there is no way you are having communion and personal relationship by doing this. <laughs> because we, the, we, we, that is a sign that you are focused on problems or on enemies. So you want to win, you want to overcome but your focus, when you come to prayer, must first of all be your father, your heavenly father, and communion with him. That means, even if you have the greatest problem in the world, you just remove those problems and put them down. Relax. Be with your father. Trust him that is he knows your problem before you even ask. Trust him that he cares enough for you that even before you open your mouth, he already knew your problem. 
Leave, when you leave your problem behind, let's say this is the problem. When you drop the problem, just to focus on the Father, that is a sign of faith on his own. That shows that you believe in your Father more. You exalt your Father. You exalt the personal relationship with your God over the problem. You put him over and above the problem. You lay down the problem. And you focus on relationship. Ah, whenever God sees that kind of thing, whenever your father will see that, eh, you are not being bothered by the problem, you are removing yourself by the problem, you are concentrating on your father rather than on the problem, he will applaud for you. He will laugh. He will be happy for you. He will say, ah, you are really my son. You are indeed my son. And that's why I say, okay, now that you have chosen me above the problem, let's forget about the problem. Just forget about it. I will deal with it for you. So that's what it means to seek ye first the kingdom, the king and his dominion. May always elevate the king over your problems, over your enemies. Always elevate the king and is the promotion of his kingdom, the advancement of his kingdom, always elevate them over and above problems, over and above enemies, over and above troubles. Just put those things down and celebrate your father. Be in personal relationship and not your thoughts in your problems. No, put them out of your thoughts and focus on the goodness of your father, on the faithfulness of your father and on his faithfulness to resolve that situation. This is what Christian Christianity is all about. And Christian prayer should be all about. So, in Nigerian church, communion is no more the focus of prayer. Confession of, of our love, of our passion to God. And when we talk about confession in Nigeria now, you are no more confessing our love to God. Though. When we now talk about confession now, we are talking only about confessing that I am more than the enemy or I am going to win the enemy. I am going to beat the Satan. I am going to beat, I am going to become a millionaire. I am going to have my breakthrough. That is the only confession we are having now. Yes, those, those, those are promises. Maybe you can confess the promise sometimes, but the greatest part of the confession has to be confession of your love for the Father. Confession of your heart to him. Confession of who he is to you. How is treasure, how is treasurable, how is precious to you. Those are the kind of confession you should be doing. And then humble supplication. When it comes to supplication, you, have, you want to supplicate or ask about your need, about your something. It should be humble supplication. Father, you see this situation. Hello, Masuda. I mean, I, I think you, you made me to speak Russian to you now. So humble supplication means you humble yourself before your father and say, Daddy, this is the thing, though. this is the situation. Humble some, not aggressive, you know, you know, supplication and be saying, oh, if you don't do this, you must do it. You must, you know, not, not that kind of aggressive. And you don't do treat even your heavenly father like that. It's humble supplication. So remember those two three things. When it comes to prayer, I mean, not four things. When it comes to prayer, your main focus is your heavenly father. Even though you have problems, even though you have enemies, drop them, pull them down. Relax your heart. And just acknowledge your father. That way you are elevating your father, the presence of your father, and the superiority and supremacy of your father over those enemies. Over those problems. That's number one. Number two, know that the place of communion with your father, the place of loving, intimate communion with your father, it must be higher than the place of those needs. And the place of those problems. And the place of those demons. Those demons must not come above and before your personal relationship and communion with your daddy. And then at last, if you need them, then the confession. Confession. First of all, you confess to him, our father, who has in heaven. That is confession. I love it. That is confession. You are confessing to him how wonderful he is about your relationship, about your work with him, about your intimacy with him. That is confession. And only towards the end of the ladder, you have supplication of that. This is my need, though. This is the situation. That is like the last thing. And that is done in a humble situation. But what we have seen today, you saw those prayers? 
My people have been mentally disturbed. They have been derailed by these pastors. These pastors have just messed up the mind of our people. They've messed up their mind. They've messed up their, you know. Anyway, so humble supplication, that's the last one. But then you are supplicating for your help or whatever you need before a kind, benevolent God. And more of literally, not and no more of lit, not not more of lit, uh, not literally battling physically with Satan. What we are having right now is battling with demons and Satan. You know that's what we are doing right now. What we have right now is more of literally battling with demons. That is no prayers. That is paganism because that's what Babalawos do. Witch doctors. You know when witch doctors go to battle. They, I mean, to face, you know, they always say, oh, I said this, I said this, they will be doing chanting, doing this exactly what the witch doctors do. That's now what we now do in church. Oh, we, I call your name, you the enemy, you must do this, you must do that, you enemy, you spirit of this, you spirit of that, the spirit of my father. That is what the enemy, that's what the pagans do. And that's what we are now doing. Frantic situation. Frenzy. We bring ourselves to a frenzy situation. Thank you, sir. Look what the Bible says about prayers. Matthew 6, 5. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray, standing in the synagogues. You see? Standing in the synagogues, even in the church, like our people are standing and on the corner of the street, that they may be seen by men. You say, prayers according to Jesus is not something you do in the public. It's not a public spectacle. But in my country right now, and in my continent right now, most prayers are in the churches. But in Jesus' mind, and in God's mind, most prayers must not be in the public or in the churches. Most prayers, in fact, only maybe... Of course, there are public prayers and there are, uh, you know, corporate prayers. There is something like corporate prayers, but those corporate prayers in the Bible, where you see them, is more, maybe about five percent. So let's say your prayer, all the prayers that you have, your prayer life should be is hundred percent. Only about five percent of those uh, your prayers that you offer will be public. Will be it will be it the part of the public uh, corporate prayers. 95% of your prayer life is supposed to be secret. It's supposed to be something that nobody knows about. So prayer is not something to be, you know, you know, standing in the public place and be, you know, you know, with everybody else all the time. And that is what people do in most of African churches these days. It's like if you want to really pray, you must go to a prayer meeting. If you want to pray, you must go to church. If you want to, but that's not what New Testament prayer is about. That's what, not what Jesus is saying. This is Jesus talking of. And who is big, bigger than Jesus? No one. Who knows more than Jesus? Nobody. He knows more than all of us. So Jesus says, if you want to pray, don't go to where people are. Don't go to where you have to stand in the public place. Don't go to even church to pray. If you want to pray, go to your father who is in heaven. In the secret place. That's where your father dwells. That is your 95% of your prayer must be alone with your father in the place of intimacy, not in the synagogue, that is, not in the church. And not on some corner, in the public place, in the street or somewhere. So that they may be seen by men. Don't let people see you when you are praying. Your prayer life is a private affair. Your prayer life is an intimate affair. But we have forgotten about that now. Most of the prayers, ah, you didn't come to the prayer meeting. Ah, you didn't come to vigil. Ah, you didn't come to, I mean, it's now like the norm. It's like all prayers now must be in the public. This is wrong. Yes, there is a room for corporate public prayers. You're only about 5%. 95% of your prayer life must be private, intimate prayers with God. Assuredly, Jesus said, I say to you, they have received their rewards. People who pray in public and they are making public prayers, their attention and the focus of their prayers, they don't get resolves. And their reward is in the fact that everybody is seeing them. 
They are the one is in how eloquent they are. They are the one is in the fact that and they have been shown that they are emotional and that they, are, you know, the, that that is that is uh, they have received their rewards. It's not effective. This is not the effective prayers. If you really want your prayer to be effective, build a personal, intimate, solitude time with God. And that is when, when your father in heaven is in secret, sees you in secret, and he wants you upon it. Today, there are special phonetics for prayer. <laughs> special eloquence for prayer in prayers. Sh special chantings in prayers. Can they, can they read the words? Is it clear enough? So, you know, you see now, if anybody, everybody wants to use some phonetics. You, you know what I'm talking about. You must pray, you know, the words. Are they clear to be seen? That's what I'm talking about. Can they read the words? It has to be there yeah, so that they are able to read it. So, for special phonetics, special eloquence, chanting, all those things, nothing, they don't impress God. In fact, you don't even need to open your mouth when you talk to God. You don't even need to have phonetics at all when you pray to God for your prayer to be effective. In fact, you don't even need to, you know, you know, you don't need to have any eloquence for your prayer to be effective. You don't even need to chant anything. You can just stand like this, and you know, your mouth is not even open, and your prayer will be more effective than those people who are just shout, 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 shouting and chanting like that. So our prayer eh, has been paganized. Syncretism has hijacked our prayers. So in now in, in our African churches, is now the more emotional you are, the, the more powerful you are in prayer. But it's not about emotions. It's about the faith. And, as, and it's about personal relationship with your father. It's all going back to the days of incantations, you say. Because it's an incantation, you do this. You big on doing this, you keep on fighting, and begin to. This is like incantation that we are, we are now doing incantations and calling it prayers. Saying the right words, you see. In incantations, you must say the right words. You know, you know, the, the, you know, the moon comes this time, the sun comes this time. If this comes this time and this comes this time, then this must happen. You must, you say the right words. If you miss them or you say the wrong words, it won't work. So it's the same thing we are practicing today. We want, we want to say the right words, right phonetics, right grammar, right eloquence. You must say the right words with the right eloquence for you to really be effective in prayer. That doesn't impress God Almighty. Those are all religion and traditions of men. Matthew 6, 7 says, And when you pray, when you pray, do not use vain repetitions. You see, all those things... <laughs> God said, don't even use them. Relax. Go to your father. Relax. Don't use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. You see, that's exactly what we're doing. It's that like these things are not in the Bible. If the impression you, read, you see when you see people pray in churches today, in uh, charismatic and African churches, it's like people have never read the Bible. It's like these things are not in the Bible. But Jesus himself is mentioning them. But we keep on repeating the same thing Jesus said don't do. Don't use repetitions in prayers. Don't use force. Don't depend on your force and energy and repetitions and words for the efficacy of your prayers. Now, I think after this series, all of you will say, oh God, how do we now pray? It's like all your prayer life is messed up after this series. But then, if you want to now know how to pray, right, go and look at my prayer series. There is a way to pray there normally, very well. I mean, it's 20 message series on how to pray normally. Okay? Look at, let, look, look at this example here. Smith Wigglesworth. He never prayed more than 15 minutes at a time. But he says, 15 minutes never passes without him praying. What does that talk about? He's talking about intimacy with the Father. So 15 minutes is among people. He's going to work. He's among people. He's in church. Because he's always communing with, communing with the Father. He's always talking with the Father. He's always in relationship with God. He's always exchanging word with God. He's always talking with the Father. 15 minutes doesn't pass. 
and he doesn't pray more than 15 minutes. Just share, exchanging words. Just the, past, the awareness of God's presence. Just personal relationship with God. Talking with his father. Relating with his father. And Smith Wigglesworth is one of the most powerful men of God that has ever lived after the apostles. And he says that he doesn't even pray if it's more than 15 minutes. But 15 minutes doesn't fast without him praying. That is constant relationship. He's telling us that it is the communion that matters. Prayer is first and foremost a private and intimate affair. Your main prayer life doesn't take place in the church or in prayer meetings, but in secret. So I want you to now uh, judge for yourself and measure your own prayer life. Where does most 50% or 90% of your prayer take place? Is it not in public? Is it not in the church? In prayer meetings? In night vigils or somewhere? Or in church? But 90% of your prayer is supposed to be, 95% is supposed to be just you alone. Nobody sees you. Not even in your family prayer time. Just you alone. That is real prayer. And that is the efficient prayer. Matthew 6 says, But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, you see, intimacy, go to your room, shut your door. It means your wife is not even there. It means your children are not even there. Shut your door, pray to your. It means nobody is there. Your pastor is not there. Your church is not there. Pray to your father who is in the secret place. You see, secret place. Talk about it. That is the biggest prayer. That These are factors in prayer. And your father, who sits in secret, will reward you openly. You see, that, that is the real essence of prayer. Personal relationship with God. Intimacy with the father. Secret place. You see, he said, your father, who sees in secret, he sees in secret. He sees in secret. Will reward you openly. You see how he rewards? But when most of your prayers are openly, open, then you don't get rewarded. It is, the, your reward only comes to secret prayers. Intimate affair with your father. Because you honor him that way. You lift him over and above your problems and situations that way. This is talking about personal relationship with God. Your highest level of relationship on earth should be your personal relationship with God. Your highest level of relationship on earth is not with your husband. It's not with your wife. It's not with your church. It's not with your pastor. It's not with anything. Your highest relationship on earth must be with your God. Your closest relationship on earth must be with God. Not with your wife, not with your husband, not with your children, not with your church, not with your pastor. With God. And it has to be in secret. That is an intimate, personal relationship with God. It's your greatest attainment in God. Not your public performances or, or ministries or miracles. No, it's your intimate relationship with God. Your most effective prayers are not those at night vigils. <laughs> or with the pastor in the church. Those are not your most effective prayers. But those in secret, in intimate fellowship with God. The greatest weapon in prayer is the awareness and assurance of the Father's care. He said, pray to your Father. Okay, let's go back to that scripture. He says, but you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, Pray to your father. Come please. Sir, sir. Pray to your father. You see? The greatest thing in prayer is the awareness of your father. Hello? The greatest awareness in prayer is the awareness of your father. Pray to your father. Your father. Your ability to recognize not just God somewhere there. Not just God in heaven, but not God, but your father. Not just father, no, my. He removes the pastor, he removes the church, he removes your wife, he removes your children. Your father. 
your father. So you have to lock in with your father who is in secret place and then and your father. Awareness of the father is the greatest. Awareness of the father is the greatest power and the greatest weapon of prayer. Awareness of the father. That's why when he said, when you want to pray, say our father who is in the awareness of the father. He said, go in, shut the door, lock the door, open the door, swept out of the room, close the door, lock the door, and then your father. One on one with your father. And your father who sits in secret, your father who sits in secret will reward you openly. You see, in that particular verse, one verse, talking about go into the secret and lock, shut up the door together with you and your father. And when it comes to answer to a prayer, it is your father. It is a factor of personal intimacy that propels answers to you. It has to come from, not from your that is not what gives you prayer. I mean, answer to prayer. It is not from your ah, ah, fervency. That is not what gives you, that, that gives you the answer to your prayer. It is the awareness that my, it is the trust in your father. It is the assurance of your father. It is the faith, the closeness, the intimacy, the assurance that the, of the care of your father, the assurance of the love of your father. The abiding presence of your father. Because he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That is what determines the efficacy of prayer. And your father. It's not just God. If it's just God, it's too far. If it's just father, it's too far. It's not father for everyone. But your Who is sees in secret will worry you openly. Let's go back to where we are. The greatest weapon in prayer is the awareness. The awareness and assurance of the Father. First of all, the awareness of the Father. That's the first of all, the awareness. Then once you know that you are, you are aware of His presence, then you have the assurance, the rest, the peace. The assurance of his integrity, the assurance of his love for you, of his kindness to you, the assurance of his presence and of your best interest in his heart. He has your best interest at heart. That assurance is what brings out about the efficacy of prayer. The greatest weapon in prayer, therefore, is the awareness. Father is here with me. So when you want to go and pray, before you begin to say, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. No, don't take up like a machine gun. First of all, stop. Make sure you see and imagine that the Father is here with you. Make sure you see yourself, maybe as a little baby, and just see yourself coming to the lap of the Father, just like the disciples did with Jesus. Just crawl, crawl up to his lap. Hug him. Make sure you see him. Make sure you love on him. Make sure you see the father in your eye, in your mind eye, before you begin to talk. Establish intimacy. Establish contact with him. Awareness. Establish uh, 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 his assurance that he's here with you before you take off. It is that assurance. An awareness in prayer of your father's care. He said, your father. Pray to your father. Can you see that? Pray to your father. Then your father, who sees? What a care. What a care. This is what Christian prayer is all about. Your father, who sees? He's seen before you came. He had seen. He had seen your prayers before you came. Before you asked. Before you request it, that assurance is what 
Christian prayer is all about. Thank you, sir. All too often, our prayers begin with addressing God, but soon we shift to addressing not God, but evil spirits, both real and imagined. <laughs> but, you know, God doesn't want you to disregard him and be facing Satan, 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 Satan. Evil spirit, evil spirit, evil spirit. That is insulting to God. Even if evil spirit tries to come, face him, look at him, shut him, no, command him to go and go back to your father. It is the awareness of your father, the consciousness of your God, of your father, that should dominate your fellowship with him, your intimacy with him. It is the confidence, the, of his, the, the, the consciousness of his presence is what should dominate your prayers. Not of problems of presence, not of Trouble's presence, not of demon's presence, but of his presence. Most time is spent binding, binding spirits, casting out spirits, burning spirits with fire, calling down fire, and opposing and commanding spirits in every conceivable way. Where do you not have a video? You are supposed to be having examples here now of how those things are done. Do you put videos in between? Yeah, please let's see how those things are done in our prayers. Now, those things you are showing in the beginning, not this one now, but those ones where somebody is leading them. Those are right. that's what we want to now see. Everything is wrong. That that's the very beginning. The quality, the quality is too bad to show other ones. Okay, so you see, the focus must not be on Satan, on problems. On the enemy. Let's see this one. There's the fullness of God inside of your heart. So you will pray in that authority, in that knowing. You will pray in that understanding. Knowing that whatsoever you declare this afternoon. And to our viewers, as you declare in the place of prayer, every shambles, every tongues, every spiritual impediment that follows you down to champions will not follow you back. In the name of Jesus. Stop, stop, stop. You see what how a pastor is leading his people to pray. Every tongue, every evil spirit, every demon that followed you into the church. You know, why should you be telling Christians that it's not God who followed them to church? It's not the Holy Spirit who followed them. It's not the kingdom of God who followed them. It is evil, every evil spirit, every demon who followed them. Ah, who told you that evil spirit followed me? You see, this is how they brainwash people. And make them to be not God, God conscious, but evil spirit and demons conscious. I said I will not follow you back. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. My father. Change my story. Change my story. So, 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 so. Where is your understanding? Okay, do you see that again? My father, my father. You see that my father, my father they are talking about is not awareness. No awareness in it. And no consciousness in it. No intimacy in it. In it. That's just a word. Like a mantra. That's just a word. My father, my father. That's just a word. But what he really wants is change my story. You see where the focus is? The focus is in egocentrism again. What Jesus said we shouldn't do. Don't worry about what we... But the real focus, the real worry is change my story. You see? It means that the focus is really you. My story. My problem. My... Father, Father is just like. Instead of your story to be dropped and to be put aside and intimacy and all on your father, that is supposed to be the center stage. Please. You with me. Except you are satisfied with your level, then you can sit down and be looking at us. Say, my father, my father. My, my father, father, my father. The God of my father, Brother Joshua Gila. The God of my father, Brother Joshua Gila. Do you not understand what you are doing? Sorry, I thought it was God the father I was talking about. Of this <laughs> you see? I thought it was God the Father I was talking about, but he was actually saying uh, the God of my father, Pastor Joshua, uh, what? Brother Joshua Igila. That's the name of a pastor. So they are praying to the pastor's father. So it's not their own father. So they now have to use not the name of Jesus, 
They got a mediator between man and God. Their pastor. So you are praying to God. Can you come here? Can you believe it? Anything in this world? Can you believe that? Can that come across your mind that in the embassy of God church, you have to pray to God, the, the God of Pastor Sunday, I feel like that, to answer your prayers? No. Is that? No, it's impossible. It's just like a, a, a joke. It's a show, but it's impossible. No. Every time you know that God is is God Almighty, not God of Pastor Sunday, Dr. Sunday. Just, is this God, uh, his God and my God? Yes, the same. The same. Yeah. We are equal before our father. My father is our father. Why should I actually go through being father before to try to get there? From my first day in the church, I know that God is God. For, for everyone. It's God Almighty, Jesus Christ. We prayed in Jesus Christ, not in God of Pastor Sunday. <laughs> Just Jesus. In, in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, you see, this is how they have brainwashed the mind of my people in Africa. These pastors, these are charlatans. Charlatans have messed up the mind of people. Please, come on. Say the God of my father, God of Joshua Gila. God of my father, God of Joshua Gila. Change my story. Change my story. Give me a new song. Give me a new song. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. What is what you are seeing here? This is no Christianity. This is no Christianity here, my guys, my brothers and sisters. This is not Christianity. Christianity doesn't this doesn't have anything to do with Christianity at all. Go and show it to the Igila or uh, Joshua Igila's uh he, he go and show it to Joshua himself. He's practicing paganism, idol worshiping, syncretism, but no Christianity. To gather people in the church, to be making them to go frenzy like this, talking about the, the God of my father, Joshua Igila, and not looking for miracles and going mad and crazy like this, losing their mind like this. What? Oh, God, my God, my God. They have drawn our people crazy. They are drawing our people crazy. And these people, Innocently believe these things. These people innocently believe this. They are exploiting the zeal of these people after God. They have just removed their mind, their brains. They have just messed up our people's lives. Just and these all these people are idol worshippers. I tell you that confident. I mean, not no confidently. All these people here who are praying these prayers, they are all idol worshippers. These are idol worshippers right here. All these people here are idol worshippers. How am I sure? If you are praying for the God of Joshua Igila and not to, for your own father, you don't have personal relationship with him. It is about, you know, syncretism. You are going through somebody who didn't die for you. That is idol worshipping. These are idol worshippers. And that is the example of what we have in African churches. Our churches are full of idol worshippers and we think they are Christians. Please, follow. <laughs> Give Jesus a clap of faith. And this is the guy. He didn't stop he them. He didn't stop them. He didn't do anything. He's enjoying it. 
Because he's like a god. He's being treated like a god and he's enjoying it. And they will not get answers. If they get any answer, it is either by witchcraft or by accident. This is not Christianity. This doesn't have anything to do with Christianity. This is witchcraft right here. What, which one is this one? Commotion happening here, for example. Where is God there? Give people the chance and opportunity to connect to God and with God. Okay, go ahead. Nothing like Christian. This is not Christian faith anymore. This is syncretism. This is witchcraft. This is uh, anything but not Christianity. Please go ahead. Any saints that they put in your God, cry for mercy. Pray from your heart. No mercy, no mercy, no mercy. No. Standing between you and God, cry for mercy. If you are crying for mercy, this is not how to cry for mercy. Crying for mercy is not good, good a fight, a fighting again. If it's crying for mercy, it is about intimacy. You go into the you go you crying for mercy, you go into an intimate relationship with the Father, and you talk to him. And if you, you know if there's anything to ask for mercy for, you go and talk to him as a father and ask for mercy. And uh, you know, or go to him in an intimate position with him. Go to the secret place with him if you really want to, to confess your sin or repent of sin. But it, here again, it is ga -ga -cha 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 -cha. It is all about noise, about everything, about fighting, about emotions. Yeah, what are they saying? Mercy. Is that the way you are asking for mercy? Okay, next one. So these are just the kind of prayers that are prevailing in our church. Can you see the father there? Can you see your father who is in secret? Can you see, you know, the, the, the way, what we call past prayers and things is just messing up the mind of the people. There's another one here. You, you, is dealing with you, you, you. Deliverance is only you know. Spirit of poverty. Spirit of poverty. Spirit of poverty. Who is not poor in Africa? Of course, everybody will believe you. Spirit of Spirit husband. Spirit of Marie. Spirit of Queen. Queen of Ghosts. My spirit. All these are synthetic demons that Africans have come up with. Though. 
They are the ones who are manufacturing all these names of demons. And only, they are only existing in Africa. You see, all these spirit spirits, they are coming from our, you know, traditional religion. These are all coming from our African religion. That ancestral spirit and all that, that is not in Christianity. You don't have those things in Christianity. You know, this is just messing up the mind of the people, making them to think that some spirits are behind the water is happening to them because you are poor or you are barren or anything. It's some spirit. It's the who question rather than what question. It's messing up people's mind like this. And people spending their days, hours, days, years in this kind of churches. I mean, it's embarrassment. It's, it's an embarrassment. Let me go back to my notes. Yeah, so, these things are syncretism in the church. Much time is spent, you see, binding spirits, you see, casting out spirits, demons, burning spirits by fire, <laughs> opposing or and commanding spirits, demons, every conceivable way. And Matthew 6, Jesus said, Matthew 6, 8, therefore do not be like them, you see. Jesus said, do not be like them who do this. Do not be like them. For your father knows the things that you have need of. Your father already knew what you need. Before you ask him. So don't be behaving like a pagan. These are the things that the pagans do. This is not Christianity. This is paganism in our churches. In turn, we lose the Holy Spirit and we decree this and that blessing on friends and causes on foes. There is no scriptural basis for those such practices. That is what Babala was do. That's what witch doctors do. Causing people. The Bible said to love people. Our fight is not against flesh and blood. The Bible actually says, what does this benefit you? To give, to do good to those people who are doing good to you. That's not Christianity. In Christianity, you do good to everybody. He said, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemy. Is that what our people are doing in those prayers? They are killing them. Bless those who curse you. Bless. People, if they are cursing you, you bless them. Is that what they are doing? Do you see any prayers of blessings in those examples? No, only kill and die. Do good to those who hate you. Even those who hate you, they, they qualify to, for you to do good to them. And pray for those who spitefully use you. Pray for them who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil, on the, on the evil and on the good. That's how you become a sons of your father. Do good to the good and the evil. And sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Perfect in love. Loving your enemies, doing good to everybody. That's what God says as perfection. Next one. Indeed, there is no scriptural basis for such often popular mantras as Holy Ghost fire with which people often attempt to ward off evil forces. Reference is often made to Daniel's experience in Daniel chapter 12 where the angel told him that the prince of Persia had intercepted the, the answer to his prayer. You know all that story. However, Daniel's involvement in bringing change to the situation was more passive than active. He continued in his fasting and prayers because he was waiting for an answer. He didn't even know what was happening with the angel and, you know, demons. He was not involved in any way in the dislodgement of the interloping power. Indeed, he did not even seem to be aware of his existence. 
The sad picture is here is that much too often when prayer becomes primarily characterized by commanding, decreeing, and combat, we have moved out of the context of the Bible into something else. Please, let's compare how we pray today and the types of prayers that we pray, I mean, that we pray to the apostles' prayer. You know, but you know, today, even those pray, those examples using Daniel. It's not, it's no more in the New Testament. In the New Testament, the curtain has been open. In the days of uh, Daniel, the curtain was still closed. You still need to get, pray to some, you know, God has to be bringing the angel, to sending the angel to bring your prayer in. Right now, you are in the Father, and the Father is in you. Right now, you are in the kingdom already. The kingdom of God is in you. You don't need any angel to bring anything. You are already in the kingdom of God. So those examples of Daniel is a waste of time. Is a matter of ignorance. Let's see some videos here. Wherever you are, ah. any evil spirits ah. in your life, ah. in your body, ah. in your soul, ah. in your spirit. bad habit, anger, temper. How can you cast that one out? How can you cast out your flesh? The work of the flesh. You see, all these things don't have anything to do with the Holy Ghost. People are just falling for fun, or they are just doing what they are instructed to do. But if he's cutting out anger, temper, and people are falling down, the demons are going down, you see, it's rubbish. Nothing to do with the Holy Spirit at all. <sighs> Paganism in the church. Syncretism in prayer. I mean, people, I just look at this one. I'm sure some of you have remembered it. This is, this is my old friend here. <laughs> I mean, what? If you look at his mouth, just look at his mouth alone. Everything is fitting. I don't need to say anything in this case. Make you look. <laughs> you are rising from that pit of darkness now. Your stolen glory is restored back to you today. Every door lock against you begin to open by force by fire. The Lord God sent fire and thunder to every religion of darkness where they are fighting against your destiny. I pull down the strongholds of hell that rise against you. I pull down the strongholds of darkness that rise against you. I pull down the strongholds of hell that rise against your marriage. I pull down the strongholds of hell that rise against your finances. Anywhere your work. 
watching me right now, begin to share the video, begin to invite your friends, begin to thank Amen. I decree by the authority of heaven. Fire rise for your sake. Fire rise for your sake. Thunder arise for your sake. Fire arise for your sake. Every power fighting you, I pull them down by fire by thunder. Any evil power fighting you, I pull them down by fire by thunder. In the name of God is power. We have to mention your name for evil. Let the thunder of heaven destroy them. Let the fire of heaven destroy them. Elijah prophesied. He said that God will lay the blood of Jezebel at the air, at the passage of Jezreel. And it came to pass. He had somebody, any power, any authoritative power that lock your womb, that say you will not be a child. Let God lick their blood. Let God lick their blood. Anybody that has ever vowed who in their lifetime that no good thing will come to Wait, wait, wait. God should lick, lick their blood? <laughs> God should lick their blood. Let God lick, 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 what? Lick their blood. God should lick their blood. Wait, 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 wait. Bring it back a little bit. Dog or oh God? Dog. Dog. Let's uh -uh. That say you will not be on a child. Let God lick their blood. Let God lick their blood. Anybody that has ever vowed that not in their lifetime that no good thing will come out of your father's house, I decree and I declare, since they have sold their soul to them, and they refuse to repent and to let you go, let God link up their blood, let them fall down and die. Anybody that possess evil power, that say you will bury your children, anybody that possess evil power, that say you will bury your husband, anybody that possess evil power, that say you will bury your wife, I decree by the authority, I command them to fall down and die. Let God lick their blood. In the mighty name of Jesus, Maliki Kumasita Lika Liburu, I decree by the authority of heaven. Who is that man? Who is that woman that has ever vowed that you will never celebrate in your life? Arise, O oh God, and let your enemy be scattered. Let the fire of God destroy them. Let the fire of God consume them. Let the fire of God destroy them. Let the fire of God consume them. Who lock your door? Every door they have locked against you. I command those doors to open. Who lock your glory? Any glory they have locked and buried in the grave. I command your glory to resurrect them. Who bury your destiny? Any destiny they have buried, I command your destiny to resurrect them. Are you watching me right now? Anywhere hey. you are watching me, if you can share this video, if you can type Amen by fire, if you can share this video and invite your friend, if I be a true prophet, before I finish this short video, your glory will escape from the hand of your enemy. Your destiny will escape from the hands of the enemy. Oh my God. Oh my God. They, they, they kill a whole cow to marry spirit to make sure that they frustrate your marriage. They kill a whole cow to a shrine and to make sure they frustrate your destiny. They kill a whole cow to a juju priest to make sure you come back home with pain. These are con artists. Just to type in you cannot type in it. And I had to. Yeah. Hey, I decree whosoever that kill a cow because of your destiny, whosoever that kill a cow because of your marriage, I'll come type a man here. That kill a cow because of your career <laughs> and share the video. Let that shine catch fire. As I'm talking now, thunder is striking the juju priest. As I'm talking now, the shine is catching fire. As I'm talking now, that is the shine. Making. Where they invoke your name, where they tie your destiny, that evil shine, where they are feeding you in the dream every day. Call that is. Night when you sleep, they must feed you in the dream. I command that shine to catch fire. I command that shine to catch fire. I command that shrine to catch fire. I command that shrine to catch fire. They move the voice. They move the voice. This guy, who trained you? <laughs> this is a con artist here. Con artist walking free in Africa like this. I mean, look at the guy. Look at what he's saying. It doesn't even make sense. 
type amen, share the video. <laughs> then immediately your shrine, your father's shrine and the shrine, you should lick blood and all that. But what is all rubbish the guy is saying? Who, who has bewitched us so, so bad like this? Is this prayer? Nothing close. There's nothing close. This, this doesn't have anything to do with prayer at all. This doesn't have anything to do with prayer. These people are sick. They need to be taken to psychiatric hospitals. Mental hospital is waiting for them. Hey, God have mercy. What was he saying? <laughs> is this the of the blood of Jesus and the blood of Jesus sprinkle on ground and no delay in the patterns of Jezebel. I decree whoever that is a Jezebel in your father's house, whoever you know the time, huh? Jezebel in your mother's house, that will be terrorizing the finish. See what people have done with our people. And some people are following this guy. Can you believe it? And some gullible people will be putting. Some go, hello. Some gullible people will be putting amen and putting share. Some gullible people will be doing all that. We've seen this already. So what is happening to Africa? This this is not Christianity. Oh. If this is the Christianity people are practicing, we don't have an idea what Christianity is all about. What does this one say? Uh, you come to church where Major One is. He prays for you. Nothing is taking place. It's a stubborn one. It's a stubborn spirit. It needs extra step. And today, we're going to take the extra step. Separate fire. That spirit will check out. Are you ready? Now, when we begin to pray, I'm telling you, there will be so much visitation of angels. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. So many people, even if some people in our ministry will see them. Some people here will see angels. I see. Oh. Mm. God will open the eyes of some people here. I they will see visions of angels. I see. And those who are watching on the screen get ready as well. We want pray. All you must do, your own concentration must be. I command the spirit, the stubborn spirit, come out of my way, come out of my finances, come out of my bill. With all your concentration, command it. Are you hearing me? One, two, three, go clap your hands and command it. Command the stubborn spirit. You stubborn spirit, come out of my life. Pray, 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 pray. <laughs> Stubborn spirit come out of my finances. Who has bewitched? Who has messed up our mind? Stubborn spirit. What? For where? <laughs> Stubborn spirit come out of my finances. Stubborn spirit come out of my marriage. And be clapping. So is the clapping helping the demons to come out? So with the clap, you will face the demons and stop all spirits out. This is the human being. No? Human beings are believing this stuff. They've messed up the minds of our people. And this is called prayers. Guys, this is not prayer. This is, you know, this is brainwashing. This is brainwashing here. Please, can, can you show me that now? This is brainwashing here. Here. That is not prayer. That is brainwashing. That is messing up people's minds. That is useless in people. Ridiculing people. That is deceiving people. These people are conatists and they call themselves pastors. The religion has messed up our people's life. What is this one saying? Whatever shame Satan must have used to connect you to himself, to connect your business to himself, 
That's what they're going to do. 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 Whatever shame Satan has used to collect your marriage yourself to himself. Shame. Shame. So Satan used shame. So in the spirit you have shames. Rubbish. I mean, just manipulation. Just messing up people's life. Minds. Instead of asking people to do to, to, I mean, telling people what is, you know, to, to, the truth. So that people would know what to do. What step to take. You are telling them that Satan has called shame. Shame in the spirit. So how does spirit shame look like? What shame? Where are you people get all this rubbish from? That's why Marx says that religion is the opium of the people. This now is no more religion. These pastors are the opium of the people. They mess up people's minds. People cannot think straight anymore. People cannot use logic anymore. So what does he say? They want to talk about it. So they need to break it. It's serious business. Give up the law. Disengage yourself. Disconnect the state. Free yourself. Liberate the state. Free yourself. Liberate the state. And this is among Christians. Free yourself from dead Satan. What kind of Satan in church? What kind of demon in church? Anyway, let me go back to my notes. Because. I mean, and people will think they are praying. These are not prayers. These are brainwashing of people's minds. Go back, please. Please, let's compare how we pray today and the type of prayers we pray to how the apostles prayed. Let's see how apostles prayed. Let's see how Apostle Paul prayed. He said, therefore, Apostle Paul is praying here, Ephesians 1, 15 to 21. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord, if he's talking about their faith, not about their car, not about their headache, not about their whatever, material things. I, in, in the Lord Jesus, and your love for all the saints. See what God, the apostles are praying for? For your faith, for your love. Not your demons and your Satan and your demon and your you know cars and your friend relatives and your enemies. I do not cease to give thanks for you. See the kind of people apostles are talking about. Give thanks for you. Making mention of you in my prayers. That the God, what is he praying about? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, focus, adoration, communion, worship. Confession. The, the, you know, the, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Confession. Adoration. Adulation. The Father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom. Not the latest car. Or the latest horse. Or the latest donkey. Spirit of wisdom. See what kind of, what kind of prayers. See how our prayers are so different from what apostles were praying about. That God will give you the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of revelation. In the knowledge of him. The focus is to know him more. See what we are praying about. The knowledge of him. The, that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. That you might have understanding. Truth. Not enemies. Not mystery, that you may know knowledge, wisdom, faith, that you may know what is the hope of his calling for your life. The hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the store for the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, which is in us. See, kind of thing we're talking about. What we already have, the truth. 
These are the kind of prayers we have in the, in the New Testament. Then when it comes about Satan, see the way he addresses Satan to, or talks about Satan. According to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the Father. See what the prayer is all about. In heavenly places, far above principalities, talking about our victory, far above truth, righteousness, far above principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, in this age, but also in that which is to come. He's talking about our victory. He's not fighting. He's not going to be talking to you, fly you, so feel, feel. no, no, no. He's talking about what is already been accomplished. Who will deliver us from ignorance in Africa? Eh? When we find ourselves chanting the name of Jesus and Holy Ghost fire almost as a talisman and engaging in attempts to command and decree things to pass in the belief that it is the best way to break through and release the flow of God's blessings, we may no longer necessarily be talking about Christian faith. Once and for all delivered to us, the saints. It is no more, you know, we are using the name of Jesus now as talisman. We are now using the Holy Ghost, the fire, as talisman. That is not prayer. That's witchcraft. We are still using the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the Holy Ghost fire, as a form of talisman, incantation, amulet, etc. Whereas it is only faith in his name that matters. Acts 3.16 says, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given this man this perfect health in the presence of you all. Faith in his name. That's the only thing that matters. His name. Faith in his name. Faith in the word of God. That's the only thing that matters in this kingdom. Not all the abracabada and all the rubbish that people are brainwashing our people to do. Rather, we may well have unwittingly borrowed a chapter from the African traditional, traditional religion playbook. Even if it is decorated with a few scriptures from the Bible. That's what our people do. We just decorate African religion with some scriptures. Matthew 6, 31 to 32 says, Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Your focus in prayers must not be on this. That's what pagans do. Or what shall we drink? Do not worry about that in prayer. Don't, that should really be your motivating, things, your motivating factor in prayer. Or what shall we wear? Those things are not things that should be driving you in prayer. For after all these things, the Gentiles seek, See, means those are the things that are driving the Gentiles. But when you, it comes to you, it is love for the Father that should be driving you. He says, for your heavenly Father, you see? Father, focus in prayers must not be needs, but relationship. Father, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. So forget about, put them on the second, make them second to your Father must be your Priority. Personal relationship with the Father. And when you have relationship with the Father, He will take care of other things. Seek Him first, not things. Most prayers in our churches are concentrating doing what Jesus said not to do. What Jesus said we shouldn't do is what we are doing. Don't be needs driven, but be relationship driven, love driven, and faith driven. You see, what should be driving you to God in prayer must be relationship with the Father. Love for the Father and for people. And faith in the Father and in His Word. Three things must be driving you to God. L love, faith, relationship. Matthew 6, 25 says, Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or what you will drink. Nor about your body. What you will put on. You say, those things should be, should be driving you. 
Is not the life in is, is not life more than food and the body, more than the cloth, more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather into bounds. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add a one cubit to your stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will ye not will he not much more clothe ye, O ye of little faith? Is faith, faith driven, assurance in your father, love driven, relationship driven, not needs driven. The birds, they know better. The, the, the flowers know better. But we, we don't hear God. Syncretism must be removed from our prayers so we could get to know our father personally rather than just seeking and knowing only his hands rather than than knowing his face. Rather than just seeking to get something from him, it's better to have a relationship with him. And we already saw that in some of the past uh, teachings that when the children of Israel were getting miracles and things from God, they perished in the wilderness. Because, you know, you don't get to know God by getting things, just being blessed. You get to know him by knowing his ways and seeking relationship with him. Okay, we have some of the videos. Let's show one more video so then we will open the call, the line for the calls. Uh, so if you want to call, please, uh, you know what, how to do, what to do to, to call. You go ahead and, uh, you know, look for Facebook Messenger. We are going to open the line soon. Let's see some of these, our uh, uh, miracle workers here. <laughs> in their right sense who is in their right sense and not say these people have lost their mind these people are a disgrace to Christianity these people are bringing bad name to Christianity these people are bringing bad name to Christianity any normal sane person who sees this would think that we have lost our mind and this is Dunamis is supposed to be one of the leading pastors in Nigeria one of the leading churches and they are behaving like they have lost it. They have lost it totally. What is all this show for? Rubbish. Dehumanizing people. What is all this rubbish? Humiliating women. Somebody's wife. Somebody's children. And you are all dressed up in... You know, what is happening? What is all this about? This is paganism right there. This is not Christianity. This is not Christianity. What is this happening? Who has bewitched us? Who has messed us up? What is all this, huh? You 
It's a pity. It's a pity. These people have just messed up our people. They've just messed up the lives of our African people. They've just, you know, they are just exploiting their, their poverty and their dire situation and just try to do all kinds of crazy things, making our people look silly. Even the Babalawos didn't treat the people as bad as this. Even the witch doctors didn't treat people as horrible as this one. Okay. Hello, is that Apostle Paul? Yeah, this is Apostle Paul. Yeah, please, I want to hear your contribution today. God bless you. God, God bless you. Heaven, heaven is rejoicing. Heaven is rejoicing. I see, I see heaven. I see heaven rejoicing, sir. Because what you just did now, sir, it's an amazing thing. You know, I, 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 I was privileged to be in Ibadan one time, you know, in a visit, and the pastor said everybody should bring out their guns, you know. Bring out their yeah. guns? Yeah, it says bring out your guns. So, uh -uh. and everybody brought out their guns. And uh, he said, what? now I want you to fire at the enemy. And what we had was, ga 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 Somebody was doing, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> so their gun is their yeah, mouth. I was watching. I'm <laughs> wondering, what do they, what is this? The devil is a spirit. He was Lucifer that was thrown down. And he fell down with one wow. head of demons. The angels, they call demons today. They are spirits. They are not physical flesh. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. They are against flesh and powers. And, you know, I used to tell people around me that prayer is communion with God. That is talking with God in your closet. Your closet is not in your closet. You say, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart. Because a man can so is he. He said, even be, it's, there's a prayer. They even used to say that before we pray, he already had us. What does that mean? It means God searches the heart. So I tell people that prayer is, you know, Jesus taught us one prayer. This one, our father, not our papa, not our G-O. Uh -uh. Is he it, say looking on to Mocha or looking to Pastor Depo? Uh -uh. You say looking on to Jesus. Because when John the Baptist had members with him, he told them that, don't look at me, all of you are my members now, but please, oh, there is a one coming after me. I have to decrease for him to increase. They were wondering, because even Herod, who was the Antichrist, had so much respect for John the Baptist. <laughs> so they were wondering, say, John the Baptist, you are powerful. You are doing miracles. You are doing... Why will you tell us to, to focus on somebody coming? They say, calm down, you will not understand. And suddenly when Jesus appears, John the Baptist said, there comes the lamp of God that takes away. The Bible says everyone with John the Baptist left him. John the Baptist did not shout, Ah, my members, come back, my members, my members, are you leaving me? My members, come back. Uh -uh. He didn't do like that. He left them because it wasn't about him, but about Jesus. Yes. I visited the church one time and a man, a man of God said, if you know you are here, you cannot speak in tongues. That means you are not, the indwelling spirit of God is not in you. So if you cannot speak in tongues, come out. People came out. He said, open your mouth and begin to op open your mouth and begin to pray. People began to, people were getting, he said, yes, 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 you can speak now. So only one man was left. That particular man that was now left, he said, you, everybody is speaking in tongues, you must speak. The man was already tired. <laughs> he said, speak, speak. The man became tired. They pushed him to speak. Before you know it, the man said, say, mezabo, 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 mezabo. He said, yes, that is it, that is it, that is it. Keep saying it, don't stop. Keep saying it, keep saying it. At the end, the man went back to his seat and told his girl, his wife, what I was telling him was in uh, Bini language. I said, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> That's what they would say. Leave me. I am tired. Leave me. Alone. In his language, oh. and the man of God said, you have gotten it. You have gotten it. That's the spirit. Anyway, everyone who is in the platform here, whom I say anything concerning Pastor Sunday Adelaja, but I smile because it's a paradigm shift that is happening in the realm of the spirit. 2 Kings chapter 10, verse 18 to the end. Anyone who wants, because Paul said, I love the church of the Bereans. That after they have heard these things, they still went back to check the scriptures. To find out if these things they are saying is true or not. Because this race we are going to, he said you should stand individually at the judgment seat. Not you shall stand with your pastor. So you have no right to stand before God and say, God is my pastor that taught me about fighting. It's my pastor that told me how to pray. You're on your own, because according, he said he gave them abilities. According, he said he gave them gifts according to their abilities. In 2 Kings chapter 10, 18 downwards, 
I yesterday I called and I told you that all the prophets of money or prophets of Baal were all killed because Israel could not a type of church. Israel is a type of church. So Israel turned their back towards God and began to worship Baal. And God had to introduce fire, John the Baptist, Elijah. And the John the Baptist God is reducing, which you are part of it now, where he erasing the second coming as a lion that will roar. Not the one you will slap him and he will turn his other face. No. It's a, it's a different game now. The Bible says knowledge shall increase at the last days. Uh -huh. Knowledge shall increase. You are using iPhone 33 times before. Now you have iPad, Android, and you feel you don't, what of God see the same thing as it is before. No. And the Bible says what? In 2 Kings 10, 18, he said, Jehu, after Elijah had gone to heaven, he was taken. Elisha had to anoint someone called Jehu. It was in the time of Jehu. Jehu now said, if the prophets have been killed, all the prophets of money will die because like a cancer. Because Israel turned away from God. The way the church has turned away from God. So God had to introduce a man that would do the payment. So when Jehu came, Jehu said, okay, now that all the prophets have died, we cannot stop there. What about the worshippers of money? Gather all the worshippers of money. Jehu pretended that he was not a worshipper of money too. He loved money. He said, all of them gather. And the Bible says what? Well, they all gathered in a building. All the, he said, if you are a servant of a worshipper of God, don't enter here. But if you are a worshipper of money, please come with me too. I want to worship money. And the Bible says what? Well, all of them were slain. My message to everybody, if you are still worshipping money in spirit and in truth in this last day, <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry for you all. Because God, Jesus said, God is looking for people that will worship him in spirit and in truth, not money. So if you are still worshiping money in spirit and in truth, a time came, Jesus was walking and they were following him. And Jesus asked them, why are you people following me? All of you, that's, is it because of the miracle of the loaf for bread and five fishes I did that you, and five loaves of bread, that you are following me? Oh, because of miracle. Why do you go to church every Sunday? Oh, you want a baby. You want money. You want car. You want visa. You want it. So you are following me because of the miracle, right? That's all of you are following me. You go to church because you want something from me. You are seeking the gift, not the giver of the gift. Okay, you are seeking the gift, but you are not seeking the giver of the gift. Jesus now said, you none of you will see any miracle again. I'm going to stop miracle. The only thing you are going to be seeing is the sign of Jonah. And everybody turned away from him and began to move. Everybody left him. Only few kept. He said, hey, you disciples, are you want to live too? And Peter said, where to? Where else will we go? You have the word of life. Please, I am speaking to everyone in this platform. There is a move of the spirit right now that is happening. The button has left Eli's hand. It has been transferred to Samuel. Samuel is not a son to Eli. Oh. So it's not a family business. Oh. Because the sons of Eli were killed because they carried the presence of God, thinking that the presence of God they were carrying was still with them. But they were humiliated in the battlefield. The presence of God the ark of God was captured by the Philistines. God allowed it to happen. God hasn't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you so much, sir, because uh, uh, until you are dead, you cannot preach this kind of message you are preaching now. You, until you are dead, because Jonah had to die for him to stand in Nineveh to speak what God has sent him to do. So any man of God who is not yet dead in Christ cannot speak what you're speaking now, sir. I'm coming back to Nigeria. I've been in Asia all the while. All my neighbors here, no one has disturbed me with makata kata kata. No, no, no. But they have skyscrapers everywhere. I am living well. So I'm returning. So I want to join your team. I am coming to Nigeria. I see you in Nigeria. We are coming. We are transforming it. Amen. We let us lay our life for it. But they must know the truth. Amen. We are coming. Thank God you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Apostle you. Paul. Thank you so very much. Brilliant. Brilliant. Brilliant, right on, right in the spirit. Be beautiful. Please go and share the message. If you have yet, if you have not yet shared the message, go ahead and share the message. Let's go and share the link. Just share the message and let's, you know, let's be a blessing to somebody else. And of course, if you have not listened to my series on prayers, please go listen to those series on prayers in um, on the Facebook or yeah, YouTube or Hello Charles. Hello, good evening, sir. Yes, we are you're happy to hear you today. I I greet the the blessed family, the platform. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm I, I'm I'm tired. Uh, anyway, I I I to talk. <laughs> as the, as the day unfolds, listening to you. 
Hello? I think we lost him all. Hello? He has to call back. I think his internet is bad. But <laughs> So please let us uh, go and uh, invite our friends. Let us invite our uh, uh, to watch this or, or what do you call it? maybe not invite or tag tag our friends that this might be able to you know to help them it might be able to set some of our people free because a lot of our people are living in this darkness and in this uh, ignorance uh, so let's go ahead and uh, send a message to them and set them free from this deception that is going on in our in our place so uh, we lost that last caller but I think it will call back definitely. Hello, hello, Paul. Hello. It's also bad. Line. It's the line is very bad. You have to call back, Paul. We, we couldn't hear you. So uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's let's uh, just you know wait for the next caller. And, uh, you know, this is a serious topic. I understand people who are confused about it. Hello, Femi. Hello, good evening, sir. Doctor? Yes, how are you, sir? Hello, doctor. I'm good evening, sir. I'm hearing you very well. Lovely speaking to you once more today. Yes, thank you, fact, sir. I'm sort of well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always listening to you and watch your program. Very interesting. Hmm. I wanted to call yesterday, but I didn't understand the. But today I got it right. May, I believe the Nigeria is the land of the Soman and Gomara. <laughs> and I believe God, 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 God is going to deliver Nigeria. Yes. Yeah. God is going to deliver Nigeria. Amen. Uh, I, I only say something that. Uh, uh, <laughs>
That's what the pastor told me. That you have to pray for what? That uh, the pastor told me that we uh, that uh, we have to pray for the hall of the church and so on and all this. I said, Pastor, but institution, my institution then is not okay. So what do you expect me? Yeah. They say I have to understand now. Uh, blah blah blah. I said, ah, Am I the one that asked you to start church? <laughs> I say I'm too radical, I'm too tough, blah blah blah. And then the later on, the, the, there's one a business that somebody wants to do in Nigeria, and I introduce the pastor to the uh, Chamber of Commerce in Spain. And then uh, later on, the, the head of the Chamber of Commerce now asks me, Mr. Wola, this man is a pastor, why is he looking for business? So that's what the white man told me that he saw they will not be, they, 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 they cannot work with the what they, they, they cannot work with the pastor, yes. They cannot work with the pastor. If you are a pastor, be a pastor. So the system now, I know something is going to happen. I really appreciate you, pastor. The whole, Thank the whole, you. Everybody is watching. You can see what is happening. The other day, they are attacking uh, this man that is preaching, this, uh, this presenter in Nigeria. Yes, but Thank you. is trying to attack the man, and the, the, uh, the uh, Suleiman is trying to attack the other one. Thank uh, you so much. Message. Yeah? Thank you, sir. Thank you Thank so you, much. Sir. God bless. Yes. Thank bye, you, sir. Bye. Yeah, well, all of us have to begin to raise up our voices. That's the only way to bring about a change. That, you know, all of us should have to become a voice and begin to help speak the truth. And that's the way to bring sanity to, back to our society. They have messed up the minds of our people. I mean, the work that is ahead of us is enormous. Colossus. It's a colossus amount of work. They have messed up the minds of the people. Look what they call prayers. I mean, they are just using manipulation of prayers to mess up the mind of the people. And the people don't even know what prayer is anymore. They are practicing paganism in the name of prayer. Hello, Charles. Yeah. I, are you, in a, be, are you in a better place now so that we could hear you? Hello. Yes, I said, I hope you are I've been having better internet now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know where I was before. I, I think straight up. Yes. Anyway. As I, as I said, uh, uh, the topic you are treating today, it, it, it needs an urgent attention in Nigeria. About the, yeah. about the prayers? Yeah, it needs a, it's a, it, it need a very, very big attention in Nigeria. Because, uh, because as I said, I, I don't know how, this book, how they got the secret of manipulation that to the extent we don't even know what is happening. Understand? Even when they are using the Bible against us, we are bad. Yes. You know? So it's very, it's very funny. In one of in one of the video, the pastor said, uh, the, the maybe the video you showed you showed us that the, the, the pastor, what the pastor said, yeah, if you are sitting down and you are not standing up to pray, meaning you are comfortable. Do you, do you see the manipulation? Yeah. The just, and, then, and at the end, those were those who that said that sat down stood up, making them believe that they are not comfortable. Even when even when they are comfortable, because the pastor have been said stand up, they all stood up. Yeah. Now. Um, there's another way I guess. I mean, if, if, if okay, let me just let me just say this. If any member, for example, that goes to any of the churches that, that, that you show us in that video, and you ask them, I was to this service, do you know what do you know what what would be their reply, sir? Yes. No. The reply would be, hmm, brother or sister, or whoever that asked the question, today heaven come down. <laughs> we were blessed by our daddy. See prayers. In fact, any me we are in trouble, you know. No, no one, no one will say I found Jesus that I was blessed with this teaching that makes me to to encounter with God more closely, you know. You know. So if you look to Nigeria's churches service today, hello, are you hearing, sir? Yes, yes. Yeah, you will see that most of the if the service, for example, is three hours, thirty minutes will be just for the preaching, and of course, the preaching that is not a in any ways. And uh, and one and a half hours will be for prayers of different prayer points, and those and uh, no, and those points are those the, are, are the points that they are using to manipulate the members. And those no, prayers, no. if those prayers if have been answered, I mean Africa would have been the most blessed continent now. That's what I'm talking about. The, the, the prayer point is what the Nigerians need. When you are using see the different prayer point, you are all you will, you will be hearing is. Hallelujah, amen, amen, amen. They never, they don't care about the 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 security in need or the precarity that, that 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 is attached to it. Nobody will see that area at all. Understand? 
And sir, I really th I thank you for your topic, and I beg the beautiful player followers in this platform not to leave this work for you alone, because we, we all should we all should take this teaching to every to every year, starting from our home. Thank you yeah. so much, Charles. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Have a wonderful God day. Pleasure, work, sir. You too. Bye. <sighs> Just keep on spreading the word. I hope you know people will be listening. And um, the clarity will be coming to them. Truth sets free. The Bible says that we, should, we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. So we, want, we believe that uh, God will minister the truth to people and who might uh, have been deceived. But, you know, the, the uh, answer and solution to deception is truth. So uh, let's keep on spreading the word. Let's encourage people to go listen. And um, the more they know the truth, the more they will be set free. And we'll be able to get our people back and reclaim our faith back, you know. So um, it's a pity what they have turned our minds to. They've just messed up the minds of our people. If you have not listened to the series on prayers, please go and listen. And there are many other series on the YouTube. Go and look for those series on YouTube, SoundCloud, even WhatsApp. Uh, I think maybe soon uh, somebody will come and tell you the situation about WhatsApp or the announcement maybe is already there about the whatsapp you see you have to join and get into the number the whatsapp there is a whatsapp number i'm sure they have put it there for you hello yeah, hello yes who is this please yes this is stanislas pastor stanislas okay stanislas where are you calling from i'm calling from fort worth texas in the united states beautiful we would like to hear your contribution today sir uh, Pastor Sonny, first of all, I really want to thank you from the depth of my heart. Hmm. I really want to thank you. I want to say I love you so much. Masha you are a great role model and you're bringing sanity back to Christianity. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A about two years ago, I made a video similar to what you're doing and I sent you that I was faced with lots of backlash and people were cursing me and saying all manner of things to me. But you see, even in America, the thing is worse. Christianity is like a joke. <laughs> or a pastor will come and say, oh, it's prayer time. And say, fire, 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 fire. fire. <laughs> they lie down your amen. They lie down your breakthrough. Or, and, and you get even big pastors. I'm not afraid to call them. It's Ben Hinder will say that there are some things that only a seed can give you freedom. That's right. Manipula you look at, manipulation. Yeah, you look at Hebrew, manipulation. Hebrew says faith. Yes. Faith, that those guys, they had the results they had back in the days of all true faith. It's all sin. And today, you get it like, you know, the Bible doesn't expect us to borrow. We have to live a debt-free life. And, and you get a pastor saying that, put the seat on your credit card. And actually, seat is not the word of God anymore. Seat is, uh, ah. is money. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's no more the word of God. Yes. Put it on your credit card. <laughs> so you are expecting a Christian to go borrow money from the banks. Horrible. Become a slave to those banks. Horrible. To give to a God who is kind of desperate for money. My God. It's a terrible thing. My God. Yeah, so when you made this video, I was just so excited. And it brought some fresh air in me. And uh, it's kicking that steam. I feel that the river even in me to start tackling this thing. Because I feel if things really go this wrong and we don't say what, we become corporates. We are corporates, yes. Yes. What 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 legacy do we pass over to our children? Yeah. What what gospel are we gonna leave them when we leave this world? So I am so glad that we are using social media to bring sanity back to the church. And I pray, you know, a lot of these people, because they have been so greedy, they bought private jets. So now they are in a place where their life expense requires that they keep lying in order to sponsor that kind of lifestyle. Yeah. So that most of them are not going to change, especially when they have a ten thousand dollar bill. For an aircraft every week, they keep asking for see and see and see. Yes. And now God decides to take a vacation from the church because it's all about money. <laughs> God just looks and says, like, "What oh, this guy is doing? I'm going on vacation. These people don't care about me." <laughs> so when I just thank you so much, I am so grateful. Uh, receive greetings from my another brother, Pastor Prince in Fort Worth. We just love you so much. Read your book, Church Two <laughs> and to your Mother. I thank you so much. For bringing sanity back to the church of Christ. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Please go, start doing your video. Start releasing. Thank you, Pastor. Please. Yes. Thank you, sir. I'm going to send the other old one to Agent Change today. The agent. All right. That I'm calling right All right, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. God so much. bless you. Thank you, my Pastor. Thank you, sir. Blessings. <laughs>
Wow. Well, for those people who want to get the WhatsApp WhatsApp message, the WhatsApp number is already pinned there. You see the instruction. There is a pinned announcement. That is the WhatsApp something. Go to that announcement. Go and read that announcement that is pinned. You see the notice that is pinned there. That is the WhatsApp. So if you want to get the WhatsApp number, that's the WhatsApp number right there. Okay, and that's how you can get all the messages on WhatsApp. Go and get the number in that pinned something. That's a beautiful, beautiful, brilliant mind guy that I just called. It sounds like a Cameroonian. You know, a lot of them are very, very intelligent. You know, those English-speaking Cameroonians, uh, those people who are in America who speak English, they are very, very good. Not just America, but Cameroonians, I like them. They, they use their head. Until a Nigerian religion comes to catch their head for them. Hello, Christian. Hello. Yes, Dr. Sunday. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Um, Where are you calling from, Christian? I'm calling from Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States of America. Okay, sir. I I have been watching you for a very long time. I've been a follower of your ministry, and I must say I like um, what the move of God in your ministry, and I I like. What God is really unleashing through you for these last days. You like it, but you like it, but some people hate me for it. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible, the Bible speaking, is that in the last days the knowledge of God will cover the earth and the waters cover the sea. Yes, sir. And 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 everything that was in darkness will be exposed. Yes, sir. Jesus said, "He had the light of the world. A city set on the hill cannot be hidden." Yes. And I thank God for this truth. This is the truth of the gospel. Amen. Uh, I, I, this, is, this is the truth. For so long, I have actually been against uh, the concept of tithe in the New Testament church. Yes. The concept of rascal, ra, 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 rascally giving. Yes. To, to, for, for the Bible says that these men have been, have, have, their, their bellies have become their God. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they no longer think about the sheep. They yes. think about their bellies. Yes, Jesus, sir. when he was leaving the earth, he looked at Peter and said, Lovest thou me more than these? Yes. More than these things, more than all these things. Yes. Peter sir. said, Lord, thou knowest. Jesus now said to him, Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Hmm. These guys are no longer feeding the sheep. Hmm. They are milking the sheep. Yes. <laughs> They yes. are no longer feeding the sheep. They are milking the sheep. Hmm. So I really want to appreciate what God is doing. I have been preaching this gospel in my church in Atlanta, Georgia. And I mean, I mean, the lives of people here have been transformed. <laughs> I really, I really, I am really blessed and I'm really connected to this move. Thank you, so sir. I, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to fly with you in this move, in this movement. This is a movement that will bring correction to the body Amen. of Christ. Amen, amen. Right now, the body of Christ needs correction. Yes. I see a lot of attack people coming on social media on in their churches talking jabbers. <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, when truth, when truth comes out, every lie will be exposed. Yes, Every sir. deception will be exposed. Yes. And that's what we are doing now. I really appreciate what God is doing through uh, this movement, sir. And I'm ready to fly with you in this vision and in this movement. Thank sir. you so very much. We need more men like you. Thank you, sir. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Bye. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, God is really raising up truth lovers. Because for you to stand with DSC at this time, you have to be a truth lover. And you have to love the truth more than you love yourself or your reputation. All the people who love their reputation don't want to hang up with me anymore. They want to disappear. But when you are a truth lover, you, you want to do the right thing. And you've got to love the truth more than you love, uh, more than you love yourself. Hello? Hello. Hello, Pastor Sunday. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Who is this, please? My name is Iye. I'm calling you from Derby in England. Oh, how are you, Iye? I am fine. Yes. I want to thank you immensely for the great job that you're doing okay. and for exposing all the ills that is happening in the church in Nigeria and in Africa and in the world. You know, um, I want to share a little of my experience yes, when I was in Nigeria. Okay. Um, there was this church I had gone to for... Um, deliverance. I am a Catholic by by, by, by faith, birth yes. and by practice. Yes. And so when I was having some challenges, I was introduced to this woman of God and I went to her church for deliverance. After the deliverance, she manipulated me into working in her church. And 
I am also an active member where I worship in my own church. I am a lector, I'm a reader in the church, and, and, and I'm also a catechist. I teach um, the church's doctrine. Yes, in, in yes. Church. So yes. I told her that I'm, I'm act, highly active where I am worshiping. That please, can I be exempt? And she said, no, that she has seen in the spirit that I am a minister. I must maybe be a minister in her church. So I started taking the training for ministers, and then I was active the both places because when I was worshiping, I'm an active member, and I was also in the um, the church's uh, lady council and in the parish pastoral council. So they couldn't let me be, and I couldn't tell them that, you know, I have shifted bases. Hello? Yes, go ahead. We're hearing you. Okay. So while I was with her, it was it became very cumbersome for me, and then my fiance started depleting because she was manipulating you. You, will, I, I became head of choir. And then I'll be paying for um, instruments, I'll be paying for practice, I'll be paying for this, I'll buy diesel of um, the generator. I was doing my business and I said to her, mommy, please, my finances are going there. I don't know what is happening. Please look into the spirit and tell me what is wrong, where my finances are going. And she didn't give me any response. I became worried. And then another thing that happened was that we, we you cannot talk to her eyeball to eyeball. You have to kneel down and talk to her. Sometimes when she, she is unhappy that you've offended her, you will kneel down for hours. She will not tell you to stand up. If I try to tell her, I give a few things. She will tell me that me, I should not use my intelligence, book intelligence to come and um, um, to come and oppress them. I should not use book intelligence to come and oppress them. You know, and she will keep me when we finish vigil. Vigil was every Friday when we finish vigil on Saturday morning. She won't let me go home. I will be with her, teaching her computer, teaching her this one, teaching her that one, doing all sorts of things. Even long vacation, I didn't rest. They tried a long vacation. I taught her how to manage her school. Because she's had a school, so I did start up for her and her staff trained them on how to manage school, on what to do and what not to do, you know. And in fact, she drained me, both both financially, morally, and otherwise. So I want to thank you so much for this series that you're teaching. I've been following you, and and I want to thank you that God will continue to protect you and God will uplift you and will grant you more divine wisdom and the fearlessness with which you have that you're pursuing it. Also, we are absolutely behind you. We are praying for you. God bless you. Thank you so much, my sister. Thank you. Thank you so very much. A lot of manipulation going on in the church, witchcraft practices, and all these things have to stop. So please go and join the movement. We have a movement, Movement Against Deception in the Church. Go and join the movement on Facebook. Go and like the page. Join the movement. And then we have another movement uh, that is called Citizens Movement Against Religious Cabals. So go join and go and register and uh, let's begin to raise up our voices against all these uh, malpractices that are happening uh, up and down all, all over African churches. Maybe, of course, maybe not. Maybe there are still some remnant. Definitely there will be some remnant still that are not doing all these things, but it's just too many one of them are doing these things. Hello, Aisha. Hi, TSA. How are you? Well, you know, walking my so, socks off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you did a very good job, and thank you so much for taking your time, your energy to really explain to us, to make people see and open our eyes to this truth that is happening in African churches, without tithe and offering, by the way. So thank you so much, Pastor Sunday. I just want to say something, like, it's kind of like a testimony that I want to tell people, okay. like, you know, once people know the truth, they will not be praying this kind of prayer anymore. Those people in those churches, they will not be there anymore. So uh, it's a challenge that I'm trying to bear to everyone in this platform. Now there is a WhatsApp group message. There's a series on YouTube about truth and a series on YouTube about prayers. Once you listen to truth me uh, messages and you listen to the prayer messages and you see the answer, you will not be praying for that and prayer, shaking emotion prayers anymore. So I want to challenge everyone in this platform. Let's take in on ourselves to send these messages out, to invite these people, not to condemn them, but to love them with love so they can know this truth. Because personally, Pastor Sunday, before I met you, uh, before I know you, I was praying the same prayer. And almost every African church, even in the United States, pray this way. You know, it is all over in African churches. But once I know the truth in my home, I have challenges as I speak. But when I know that truth, I'm not even worried about those 
parents because I know my father in heaven has taken care of it, you know, and, and, and then I see results when I pray in relationship with my father. So I invite everybody to go on YouTube. If you haven't listened to Truth Series and you haven't listened to Prayer Series, do so. Once you do that, you will not need to pray this emotional and exercising prayers. That doesn't even <laughs> give you answer. You don't get answer prayer. Like God don't answer those kind of prayers. You know, so that's all I want to contribute today. So, I, and I'm, I, so thank you so much. And thank you for all you do, Dr. Sunday. May God strengthen you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, Aisha. Thank you so very much. Wow. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. For those people who are still asking for the WhatsApp messages, do, you know, you see the pin? There is a pin message there. A comment. There is a pin comment. That's it. You just go there and get the number for yourself and you can join and begin to yeah so for you who want to uh watch the prayer series just go to the youtube sunday adelaide official and then uh, that's it go to youtube sunday adelaide official and you see, go to the home page and in the home page you will see many many series so make sure you finish all the prayer series because i had some people will listen to one or two uh, messages on the prayer and say oh that's it that uh, they have uh, listened. No, those are 20 messages. There are 20 messages there. So you need to go through the whole series. And uh, and for those people who, uh, okay, I see that there are no more calls coming in. Okay, I think we just finished earlier a little bit today. Uh, so thank you so much. It has been a long time for me. I think this is my fourth fourth program today. But if there are calls, we will receive. But there are, I see there are no more calls. So we'll just end up that way. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. We'll see you people tomorrow. God bless you all. Bye.